So this one, uh, Signorina by Salvatore Ferragamo, I think you say his name. This is the Eau de Toilette version, and that's an important distinction because they have different notes, this and the um, uh, Eau de Parfum. So this one I was attracted to because basically I was doing a search for rose perfumes that didn't have vanilla, didn't have cedar, um, didn't have peach, but I wanted to find one that had lycian rose because that's some of the notes that I um, enjoyed in uh, Fleur d'Ombre Rose by um, Jean-Charles Brousseau. And I was just hoping that that there would be a perfume that popped up that just kind of spoke to me in the notes and this one did um and then i watched a few people talking about this on youtube and it just sounded really nice i just thought okay this is worth trying um my bottle um was originally a tester so it's been it's a bit battered and bruised in it um it's missing its lid <laughs> sadly poor little thing but um so the notes in this, the top notes are lychee and grapefruit, the middle notes are rice and rose, and the base notes are milk mousse and cashmerian. I'm wearing this one today. Oh. So, interestingly, this is nowhere near as sweet as I thought it was going to be, not on my skin anyway. Um, again, like, uh, I haven't had this in warm weather. So I, I'm sort of waiting to see if this is going to be one that, that really gets a bit sweeter and more exciting in um, summertime. Um, I think if this didn't have the grapefruit in it, it would probably be an absolute love for me because I do get a bit of the milky, milky mousse um, and it's so nice to not have vanilla. I think it's quite, cr it's a little bit creamy this one. It's not it's not hugely creamy. I'd say anyone could wear this really easily, even if you didn't like lactonic scents, even if you didn't like sweet scents, because the sweetness doesn't really last. And it's not, well, I mean, not in a serious way, certainly not compared to most modern perfumes. It's, um, it's relatively subtle. I think this one's probably very easy to wear. You know, I've been able to wear it to work and it hasn't bothered me and it's lasted maybe until about mm, three o'clock where I've wanted to reapply. So this one's not bad at all. And um, the, this is a bit more expensive though. I think you're looking, uh, I think this was, I think you're looking at about 20 quid for a tester. Um, but this is a 100 mil, I think. So that's fair enough. Doesn't actually say it on it. That is the first time I've ever seen. Oh, anyway, it's obviously missing a sticker somewhere. Um, but yeah, I think this is from the feel of it. It's a hundred mil, um, and I think this was maybe between fifteen and twenty pounds when I got this. But yeah, you're looking at probably between thirty and forty for a new bottle of this, and. Um, yeah, I think it's probably worth it. It's one of the more interesting rose perfumes that I've smelled recently. So I, yeah, I think this one's kind of nice. And um, I would totally recommend this to people who, who want a, a rose perfume, but want one that's not ridiculously strong, not ridiculously sweet, but has a little bit of sweet creaminess along with the kind of quite rose watery, tangy rose. And it's definitely tangy. It's definitely like occasionally nose tingly, but not nose tingly the whole way through. I find most rose perfumes a bit nose tingly, to be honest. That might just be me. Um, but yeah, I think this one's kind of kind of cute. Um, I think it's really worth a shout. Um, although everyone's been talking about it. The notes in the Eau de Parfum do not speak to me at all. I don't think I'd like that one. I think it's also been compared to perfumes that I already know I don't like. There's one called Signorina um, Flor, I think, or Floral or Flowers or something. And again, the notes in that don't speak to me either, but the notes in this I really was excited about. I thought these looked great. And I do actually quite like this one. I'm not sure it's my forever rose perfume, but I, I, I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> 